In chapter eight, we'll be covering interval estimation. The best way to use these videos is to watch with your notebook, take notes, pause the video often, and attempt the U-Try problems on your own by pausing before the solutions are shown. In 8.1, we're going to be covering confidence intervals for the population mean. So remember that the population mean is mu. And in this section, we'll be covering when the standard deviation is known. So what does it mean to estimate with confidence? So one aspect of statistics is estimation, which is the process of estimating the value of a parameter, so from the population, from information obtained from a sample. So you've encountered estimation many times in your life, the average amount somebody pays for their health insurance. That's based maybe on one small sample, but you can estimate with confidence based on maybe how many times they did the sample or things like that. 8% of people surveyed in the U.S. said they participate in skiing in the winter. So in all of these examples, the populations are extremely large. So the estimates were obtained from samples. They certainly didn't ask every single person in the U.S. if they ski in the winter. So how can you say with confidence that your sample, your study is correct? How do you estimate with confidence? And that's what we're going to be talking about. So we've got the point estimator. Now, I just want to point out that your textbook uses capital P bar, but what I use and what most textbooks use is P hat, and you'll also see lowercase p bar. These are all the same symbol. So we use point estimators. So X bar, this would be the sample mean, and P hat is our sample proportion, and those are our point estimators. And the value of the point estimator is derived from the given sample. So for example, X bar is equal to 96.52 miles per gallon. That's the point estimate of the mean for all green cars, right? So it's a sample mean. And then P hat 0.32 is the point estimate of the proportion of teenage students to all students in a given university. So what is a confidence interval? An interval is um, a range. So a confidence interval provides a range of values that with a certain level of confidence, 90%, 95%, it contains the population parameter of interest. So the mean or the proportion. Sometimes they call it an interval estimate. So to construct a confidence interval, it's the point estimate and plus or minus the margin of error. So in this case, our point estimate is X bar, our sample mean, plus or minus, and the margin of error is the Z score times the standard deviation. Okay? Um, and this is the variability of the estimate. So let's look back at the empirical rule for a moment. So the empirical rule we covered, we've got these percentages, and they're basically between plus or minus the standard deviation. And they're the standard deviation times um, 1, 2, 3, the z-score times the standard deviation. So this was with 68% confidence, we could say that our data falls between these. This is our confidence intervals for our empirical rule. So when we construct the 95% confidence interval for mu when sigma is not, it, excuse me, when sigma is known, we are going to be using the normal random variable z. Similarly to the empirical rule, we're trying to find out the range at which we can be confident or at what percentage we can be confident that the mean falls within those values. How we want to make sure we word our confidence is we want to say with whatever the percent confidence, so with 95% confidence, we can say, we can report that the mean falls between and then the values <clears throat> of that interval. So that's how we interpret the confidence interval. With whatever percent confidence, we can report that the mean falls between those two values. So to construct a confidence interval, <clears throat> For the mean, when sigma is known, we are going to need the sample mean, we're going to need the z-score, sigma, and n, and then remember that this right here, this right here, is our margin of error. So if the directions ask you just for the margin of error, you just have to calculate that. <clears throat> so let's do an example. A sample of 25 cereal boxes 
yields a mean weight of 1.02 pounds of cereal per box. Construct the 95% confidence interval for the mean weight of all cereal boxes. Assume that the weight is normally distributed with a population standard deviation of 0.03. <clears throat> all right. So first we are dealing with a 95% confidence level. And they tell us that a mean weight of this sample is 1.02. We know that it's a sample of 25, and they give us the population standard deviation of 0 0.03. So when we go to construct this, we have the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error, and the margin of error is our z-score times sigma over the square root of n. So the main thing we're missing here is our z. So when we want to find our z-score, what is the z-score associated with a 95% confidence level? And we covered this previously, and so this should be in your notes from before, but the z-score associated with a 95% confidence level is 1.96. And if you want to go back to the previous examples to recall how to get that, go for it. So we'll say here that to find this confidence interval, we'll just plug in. That's 1.96, 0 0.03 divided by the square root of 25. So when you're calculating this, um, you want to calculate the margin of error first. So you'll type this into your calculator first, and you'll end up with, 0 0.01176. So this right here is our margin of error. And then if we want the confidence interval, sometimes you can just leave it like this. That's the confidence interval. We can um, round it here. We could say 1.02 plus or minus 0 0.012. And that could be the answer. You can also um, say with 95% confidence, if they want you to interpret it, that the mean weight of all cereals fall between, and then we would add. So we would do the subtraction first to get our lower limit between, when we subtract those, we get 1.008, and to get the upper limit, we would add that, oops, and we would get 1.032. If you'd like to read that or see it written out, there you go. Go ahead and give this one a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. And there you go. So what happens if the confidence level is something other than 95%? When it was 95%, we knew that the z-score is 1.96. So if we have the level of significance, that is our alpha, confidence coefficient is one minus alpha, and then the confidence level is one minus alpha times 100. So when we're determining the confidence level, the difference here is just that we are going to be taking that z-score that we get, that critical value there, and placing that in. So that's all that that means. And we can find this value. So when we're get, we'll be given alpha, right? And so um, we can find this percent or this probability here by using the norm distribution 1 minus alpha over 2. Because remember that we get back um, the left side of the tail. So here we go. Let's look at these and let's actually figure them out. So filled in is the 95% because we've already done that one. So if we're talking about a 95% confidence level, then the alpha is one minus that value. So one minus 0.95. So here 100 or one minus 0.9 or 100 minus 90, however you want to think about it, our alpha is going to be 0.10. And alpha over two, we'll just divide that value by two. Now, if we want to find the critical value associated with alpha over two when alpha over two is 0.05, I'm sorry, yep. So here we want to find to the left one minus 0.05. So when we calculate this, we're going to do norm.dist and our Oop, excuse me, we're going to be doing norm.inv because we're trying to find the z-score. We have the probability. We know that it's 1 minus 0.05, and it's standard, so 0 and 1. So the associated z-score with 90%, the critical value here, so it's the critical value down here, we get 1.645. So when we're talking about a confidence level of 90%, our associated z-score is 1.645. We can do the same thing with 99%. We're left with 1% over, or 0.01. When we divide that by 2, we get 0.001, excuse me, 0.005.
And then again, if we want to do the same thing, now we're saying that inside this little tail over here is 0 0.005, and remember that we always get to the left. So we'll do the same thing that we did before. We'll do norm.inv, 1 minus 0 0.005, and it's standard, so we do 0, 1. So we get a z-score of 2.575. Or seven six, excuse me. And I would commit these to memory or write these down somewhere. These are really common confidence levels, and I've got them right here for you, and we will be using those often. Go ahead and give these a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. Mm.